I'd like to demonstrate the process of uploading a QCOW2 file to CloudStack that we'll use to create a CloudStack volume that's backed by a SolidFire volume. Now, before we get into this process in more detail, let me first show you my infrastructure. I have just a single zone, single pod, two clusters, one of which is KVM, and that is what's housing my application VM. And then I have another cluster, which is a Zen server cluster. And for the sake of simplicity, I've taken all of my system VMs and I'm running that, them on that Zen server cluster. So I have two KVM hosts and two Zen server hosts. If we look at primary storage, and I'll click on the view all button so we can see this in a bit more detail. I've got two primary storages. The top one is the one that we're mainly interested in for the purposes of this demo. The bottom one is just being used to store the root disks of the system VMs on that Zen server cluster. But that top primary storage is zone-wide primary storage that makes use of the SolidFire storage plugin, which is an example of what CloudStack refers to as managed storage. And what managed storage is, is a way to map a single backend volume onto a single virtual disk. So in the case of SolidFire, where we have guaranteed performance on a volume by volume basis, you can then guarantee performance to virtual disks on a virtual disk by virtual disk basis. And so what I've done is I've created this primary storage, I've set it up so that it's based on the SolidFire storage plugin, and that it's, in this case, operating at the zone level. So you could actually use it from both my KVM and my Zen server clusters, but here I'm just going to be using it from my KVM cluster. I've given it a storage tag, in this case just something like, I believe it was PS-123, and we'll see where that comes into play in just a little bit. The next area we want to take a look at is the service offerings. I'll click on that tab, and then in the upper kind of middle left, I'll select from the drop-down disk offerings. And at the moment, I don't have any disk offerings. I want to create a custom-sized disk offering, and to do that, I'm going to first go into the upper right, Add Disk Offering, and then I'll provide a name, maybe something like uh, SFDO custom size. For the description, maybe I'll say size equals custom min uh, related to min IOPS equaling, let's just say 5,000, and max IOPS of 10,000. All right, now that we have that, we can take a look at some of these other fields. Storage type shared is correct. We can ignore the provisioning type, all SolidFire volumes and their metadata are thinly provisioned, uh, so we don't have to worry about that setting. And uh, for the size setting here, now instead of actually specifying a size, as we noted in both the name and the description, I'd like to make this a custom disk size, so I'll just go ahead and click the checkbox there. The next field of interest is this QoS type. I'll click on the combo box, select storage, and then for min IOPS, I'll put in the 5,000 from our description, and for max, I'll put in the 10,000 from our description. The last thing we need to deal with here is the storage tags, so that this particular disk offering can be associated with the primary storage that I'm interested in having it associated with which is the SolidFire-based uh, primary storage. I'm going to type in P, and there's a couple tags that have a P in them. The one I want is PS-123, and then we're done. I'm just going to hit the OK button here. In a moment, we'll have our new custom size disk offering. There we are. Now that we have our custom disk offering, let's switch over to the Storage tab and perform our upload. I'm going to go with the uh, standard upload here, uh, which is going to ask for a URL as opposed to this upload from local. So here I go, I'm going to click on the upload button. 
Now for the URL, I actually have this over here. I'm going to go ahead, select, and copy that. So this is just pointing to a file I have on some web server. I'd like to take this QCOW2 file and bring it into CloudStack and then create a CloudStack volume backed by a SolidFire volume with the contents of this QCOW2 file. So let's take that link, go back over to CloudStack, paste it in, provide some name for it. Now this is the name of our CloudStack volume, so I'll give it something like uh, vol-a sounds good. Now I only have the one availability zone in my case, so I'll just leave that as zone 1. For the format, I'm going to pick QCOW2. Now custom disk offering, we could have left this blank and CloudStack would use its own default custom disk offering, but if you'd like a bit more control over the particulars of that disk offering, then I recommend the approach that we took where we created our own custom disk offering, and then now I'm going to select it from the dropdown. I won't bother with the MD5 checksum, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the OK button. Now this will happen in two stages. Basically we're going to receive notification from CloudStack that it received this command and then it's going to go and work on it in the background. I'm going to click on the name of this volume. We can see here the upload is not started. If I hit the refresh button, we can see now that it's uploading and it may take a little while, but we should end up in the uploaded state. In the meanwhile, I'm going to pause the video and come back when that's done. Okay, I'm back. I've hit the refresh button. We can see that we are now in the uploaded state. Now to see what that looks like from the perspective of the CloudStack database, let me switch over to a virtual machine of mine that's running the CloudStack management server. So here is a view onto the cloud.volumes table. I'll hit the refresh here to re-execute the SQL to show us all of the, the rows in this table. Scrolling down to the bottom, we can see here, I'll highlight it, we have a volume called vol-a, and if I scroll over, we can see way over to the right, our state is uploaded. And so that's where that information is stored in the CloudStack database. We can also see at this point, I'll switch over to this other tab, there's another table here called cloud.volumestoreref. I'll hit the re-execute of the SQL statement button. And here we are, uh, volume ID 22, so if I switch back to where we were and go way back over to the left, we can see that uh, 22 is in fact our volume ID. So this row is in reference to that volume, and right now we have some information in this table uh, indicative of the fact that we've successfully taken that data and stored it on secondary storage. While we're at it, let's take a look on my NFS server, which is housing my secondary storage data, where specifically this QCOW2 file is located. Now in my case, I actually have my CloudStack management server and my NFS server running on the same virtual machine. Um, it's just a simplified uh, demo environment. I'm going to switch over to my console window here, and we can see that under, so I'll, I'll highlight this here, uh, export secondary is the root of my secondary storage. Under the volumes folder, we're going to be in, in this case, uh, the folder called two. Now that's the ID of the account that was associated with the action of uploading the QCOW2 file. Now in this, in this folder here, I'll just do an ls-l, we can see that we have a folder called 22, and that's in reference to the volume ID 22. I'll go ahead and enter into that folder, and then rerun ls-l, and we can see here that we have our QCOW2 file, so I'll just sort of highlight a bit of it, and then below it we have a metadata file for that QCOW2 file.
Great, this all looks good. Let's go ahead and switch back over to the CloudStack GUI. I'm going to go to my Chrome browser, and here we are back in the CloudStack GUI. At this point, I'd like to take this CloudStack volume, which the contents at present only reside on secondary storage. I want to take this CloudStack volume and attach it to a VM for the first time. What will happen there is CloudStack will take a look at the, the disk offering of this volume. It will then look for primary storage that can satisfy the storage tag of that disk offering. It's going to find the primary storage that's backed by the SolidFire storage plugin. It'll pull out the driver that supports that particular primary storage and start invoking functionality on it like create a volume of a particular size with particular performance characteristics. So let's see that in action. Here I go to the attach button, click on that. I just have a single virtual machine uh, running in this particular environment. I'll go ahead and attach this CloudStack volume to that virtual machine, hitting the OK button. Now right now CloudStack is going through that orchestration logic, looking at the disk offering, taking a look at its storage tags. It'll find the one storage tag, it'll look through primary storage, find the primary storage that it wants to use. In this case it's an easy choice since there is only one primary storage that has um, that can satisfy that storage tag. It will pick that one, start invoking functionality as I discussed on the plugin, and what we'll see from the SolidFire point of view, and I'll switch over to the SolidFire GUI right now, is, and this is actually an old view, I'm going to go ahead and hit the refresh button. That old vol-a before I hit refresh was from a previous run uh, when I was executing other tests. So this is the current um, SolidFire volume that I have called vol-a. It has the appropriate size. So here it says 1.1 gigabytes. If we were to look over in the CloudStack GUI, we'll see here it just says 1 gigabyte. The discrepancy there is just a difference between base 2 and base 10 reckoning of the size. So that's perfectly fine. I'll switch back to the SolidFire GUI. We can see that we do, as the disk offering specified, have 5,000 minimum IOPS and 10,000 maximum IOPS. Now the burst IOPS is actually determined by taking the maximum IOPS and multiplying it by a number that we provided. I provided this before I started the demo. When I added primary storage to CloudStack that was based on the SolidFire storage plugin, this was a parameter that I provided. In this case, I provided the number 1.5. So we take max IOPS times 1.5, and we arrive at 15,000 burst IOPS in this particular situation. So this all looks great. We have our supporting solid fire volume. This contains the data of that QCOW2 file. And if we look from CloudStack's point of view, which I've switched back to the CloudStack GUI, we can see that CloudStack says this particular volume is on primary storage SF-1, which is correct. If we scroll up a bit here, we can see CloudStack sees this volume as having 5,000 minimum IOPS and 10,000 maximum IOPS. Now let's go ahead and take a look back on the management server side and on the uh, NFS server side how this looks. I'll switch back over to my virtual machine. Um, we're already here actually on the NFS server portion uh, already, so let's take a look and if I just rerun ls-l, we can see that the previously existing QCOW2 file and its .properties metadata file are gone. We've taken the contents of this and we've copied them to that solid fire volume and now these, uh, these files no longer exist on secondary storage. They're on primary storage. Well, the contents of the QCOW2 file is on primary storage. We only temporarily needed the contents of the volume.properties file. If we switch over to look at the cloud database, and I rerun this particular uh, SQL for the volume store ref table, 
we'll notice that the row that we had in this table is no longer relevant and it's been removed. Let's then go over to the volumes table and re-execute this SQL statement. Scroll down to the bottom and I'll highlight this row and uh, actually just for the sake of pointing this out the reason there was a vol-a solid fire volume before and after I hit the refresh button is because if we look in this table the row above it I had made a vol-a cloud stack volume that mapped onto a solid fire volume but that one was gone um, before I started the demo and I had not yet hit the refresh button on the solid fire GUI. So here we are with our most recent vol a If I scroll way over to the right, we can see it's in the ready state. And if I go farther to the right, we can see that it's a QCOW2 with 5,000 minimum IOPS and 10,000 maximum IOPS. Now let's switch back over to CloudStack, go over to the Instances tab, so this is my one and only virtual machine. So this is the one I attached that data disk to. I'll go to the Quick View column. Under, I'll click on View Console. And uh, this is an old console window. I'm going to hit Clear. And then FDisk-L. And we can see here I have um, a root disk, which just happens to be 8 gigabytes. And the data disk is 1 gigabyte, which makes sense because that is the size of the CloudStack volume that we attached to this particular virtual machine. Now let me exit out of this window and take a look at one final piece. I'm going to click on the name of this virtual machine, click on the view host hyperlink, and we can see here this VM is running on my KVM host called CloudStack-KVM3. So I'm going to go over to my uh, Windows VM here. I'm running vSphere Client. And actually all of my KVM and Zen Server hosts are running within virtual machines in my demo environment. The one that is running our virtual machine, uh, CloudStack-KVM3, is this one here that I've highlighted. So I'm going to go ahead and open the console window on this guy. And uh, expand that, log in, and we can see here that we do in fact have that virtual machine i-2-9-vm and if I click on it and go to the open button and then over to the i for information button we can see that we do have two disks. Now this is the root disk and it in fact is pointing to a solid fire iSCSI volume and then the disk that we just attached, which I'm clicking on now, is also pointing at a SolidFire iSCSI volume. So this all looks great. I'm going to exit out of this, and I'm going to go over to a command window and clear this out for a second, and then rerun this command. Here, I hit execute. We can see that here, my KVM host has knowledge of this is the first iSCSI volume. Uh, the first line that's highlighted is the device itself and then the next two are the two partitions. So that's my first virtual disk which is serving as my root disk. And then I'll just go ahead and highlight these next two lines. Uh, similarly the top line is in reference to the device itself and then the next line is just the one and only partition that's on that device. So this all looks great. Our KVM host has appropriate knowledge of the two uh, SolidFire iSCSI volumes and in particular the second one that we just attached after we imported the contents of that QCOW2 file into CloudStack and then attached that CloudStack volume to a virtual machine for the first time. So this concludes my demonstration on how to perform such an import. Thanks for watching.